Well, hello, everybody. Today we're here with Chrisanna Northrup. The gorgeous Chris Anna Northrup. <laughs> Thank you. And where are we today? We're in some kind of CrossFit type. What's going on? I am the co-owner of CrossFit Del Mar. Okay. So uh, there's four of us that own this gym. Uh, we have Mark Merrick, uh, Esther Merrick, Kim Bono, and myself. And we wanted to have a gym that was big and welcomes everybody of all walks of life. So you're into fitness, obviously. Yes. Look at those guns. I didn't know we are going to have a gun show. <laughs> yes. So you, you actually participate in CrossFit, huh? Yes, yes. Right. It and changed my life. It did change your life. Yes. Well, when did you start with the CrossFit? Um, when my husband and I were actually having a little bit of difficulty in the relationship. Really? Yeah. No, that's Tell me about that's it a little I more. Started. This is interesting. Well, I wasn't really working out, and I wasn't taking very good care of myself, and uh, didn't feel very good about the relationship, what was going on in life, and so forth. So I did a lot of self-reflecting, and um, I was one of those people that thought that you could only get in shape if you had good genetics. That nah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I went to a CrossFit gym just two blocks from my house and tried it out, and I realized how out of shape I was. And uh, it was depressing, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try this, and it, it changed my life. You know, it's not like you can't do it, it's you're struggling with it. Yes. But it's a challenge, right? Yes, and it's a lot of work, but the neat thing about CrossFit, which worked for me, was uh, once you start seeing changes, and you start feeling better, and that one bottle of wine a night goes down to one glass to nothing because it comes out in the gym. You don't want to. You don't want to give it up. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was just an amazing transformation, and once you start seeing some results, you don't want to stop. Yeah, and it led to more because it changed your relationship in a lot. Absolutely, of absolutely. So um, when you start feeling better about yourself and your body starts looking better. Um, Feels sexier. Sex, comes yeah. <laughs> sex is better, everything yeah. gets better. Yeah. yeah and uh, it's, it's pretty funny because my husband and I would look at other couples that were kind of letting themselves go and then when you see one person actually start to do something with themselves, we used to say, oh gosh, they're getting ready to get a divorce and that was usually the case. Right. And it's like, why not do that while you're in the relationship and then enjoy each other's bodies and enjoy the way you feel. Absolutely. And, uh, and work out together, which, I, which was huge huge for us. Once we started working out together, it was a lot of fun. That's the best. Yeah. Well, you know, you're supposed to be in a relationship to make your life better, not worse, right? Yes, that's right. And then you have this amazing book that's come out. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, so um, I came up with the concept of the patterns that my husband and I created were never, weren't working for us anymore. Neither one of us were very happy. So I thought, gosh, what are other people doing? Are they pretending to be happy? Um, Probably, yeah. <laughs> actually, my data does show a lot of people yeah. do, half the people pretend to be happy. Yeah. So um, I decided to look at what other people were doing around the world, um, figure out what was normal, and then look at the extremely happy normal. Okay. And what are those people doing differently than everyone else? And, what and can sustainable, I learn? right? Yeah, and what can Normal I but sustainable. Yeah, and what can I learn from them? And I didn't want to know just the general public. I want to know somebody the same age as me, same amount of kids, sure. you know. So I, I, I did the survey so you can actually see how you compare to your peers. Oh, okay, and then how did you go about doing that? So I um, decided to partner with a couple media partners, uh, Reader's Digest, um, also ARP, and they loved it, so they helped uh, promote the survey, and we had almost 100,000 people take it. Wow. Yeah, around the world. So this book right here, yeah. The Normal Bar, with a little heart with a check mark. The Surprising Secrets of Happy Couples and what they reveal about a new normal in your relationship. And um, as far as the pictures go, I have a very short attention span, <laughs> and I'm... You mean if you see something shiny, you're like... <laughs> I'm like, oh! <laughs> so, uh, I wrote the book for somebody that likes a lot of visuals, and okay. I'm very visual. So I bring in all the data and infographics through cartoons and visuals so people can really grasp it. Because data is actually pretty boring, yeah. but if you bring it through some fun cartoons and graphics, I actually show a bar on what's normal, the normal bar, yeah. and then I look at the extremely happy and unhappy, and it's just very visual. It's, it's a lot easier to digest. Well, they always say that picture's worth a thousand words, yes. and it really is. Yes. When you can see something, it means so much more to you, and a lot of people respond really well to visual. A absolutely. And speaking of that, of visuals, I mean, some of the some of the suggestions are is visual simulation, or yes. maybe toys, and there's so many things that you found out. And yeah. You actually created a gift set yes. for people yes. for the bedroom yes. or behind closed doors. Yeah. The, the, the research that came from this book was unbelievable. Um, so when my husband and I were going through some really difficult times, I ended up moving out from him. Uh, and when we got back together, I came up with the concept and I said, let's change our normal to a better one. Let's look at what the happier people are doing. I started the research 
And every day he say, well, what did you find out today? He couldn't wait because right. it opened up communication that we would never talk about. Everything in this book gets you talking to your partner about something you wouldn't normally talk about. Right. You don't usually sit at the dinner table saying, honey, do you like the way I kiss? Right. Do I give, you know, do I kiss well? And it's, these are just things you just don't normally talk about, but in the book it brings it up. So one of the things in general that I saw was the big disconnect between men and women. So men and women both wanting the same things out of the relationship, but not talking about right. it. Men would, I'll tell you, men don't bring that stuff up. They really don't. It's, we're but, thinking about different things, you know? We're not but, thinking about kissing, we're thinking about maybe something a little more intense. Yeah, yeah. you have no idea. The women are off the charts. Really? Off the charts, because we asked, you know, what's your number one sexual fantasy? What do you want from your partner? You know, why don't you talk to your partner about these things? We asked all these questions. We had over 1,300 questions. Wow. 1,300 questions, almost over 2 million data points. And people actually answered them? Oh, they would write stories about it. It was almost like their, their way just to, to release. Like their own Fifty Shades of Grey was, that you're talking crazy. about. crazy. Yeah, and that was before this, right? Yeah, before, all this. Before that kind of whole yeah, thing happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so one of the things that, uh, that really jumped out, well, there's a lot of things, but um, men and women both wanting more variety. And one of the biggest things is I want more passion, I want more variety in my relationship. Mm -hmm. And then when we looked at um, sexual temptations, why we asked people that cheated, why did you cheat? And it was usually because they wanted more variety. They, you know, they weren't getting enough at home that they, they looked good, they felt good, you know, their partner wasn't telling them enough. Somebody comes knocking at your door and they're like, wow, you're really sexy, yeah, you right. know, let's try this. And you're like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. But my data, 94% of the men and 78% of the women wanted more variety in the relationship. So I thought to myself, okay, so why, why isn't anybody doing anything about it? I look at myself as the market. I wrote this book. This book would have saved my relationship right off the bat. So I wrote the book for somebody that's kind of looking at their own relationship. Do I have realistic or unrealistic goals? You know, okay. so that's it's a good place to start. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's what this does. It, you know, hey, yeah, you're realistic or unrealistic, and it gives you a sense yeah, of where you're like, at. What what are other people? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, put, Just put me in relationship to the reality of this world. It gives you a sense of where you're at. Okay. So I I thought, okay, so me as a market, um, not using a lot of variety. You know, my husband and I found something that works really well for us, you know, um, but we both would like to change it up. We talk about changing it up, but do, you know, do we really go out there and change it up? And um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go into a sex store. And I went into one and like I one thought, of those little yeah, and I was like, okay, yeah. this is kind of weird. And then I went online and I was like, oh, this is kind of weird too. Didn't feel comfortable. No, it, it, it was intimidating. It was uncomfortable. And it's like you think these things, but you just don't even know where to begin. So I came up with the idea of creating packages that are for the couple on what it can do for you. Like my first package is just exploring each other's bodies, really enjoying each other. Um, so I call that the Explorer Package. And, then, and you don't even tell people what's in it. Do you? No, I don't. That's to me <laughs> intriguing. That... No, so and then I have the Adventurer Package, I have the Over the Top Package, and I focus on the relationship. Here's why extremely happy couples are using more variety in their relationship. Right. And the thing is, is even if you try it and you don't like some of the things, at least you tried it. Because if you don't try it, you think about it all the time. Well, they are, are they kind of like fireworks? Safe and sane? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I always like that. Yeah. These are fireworks, but they're safe and sane, right? And then I also have a little ingredient card on how to set the mood and different suggestions because I, I do find that people almost need some hand-holding there. And, and men are pretty tame in the sense of what they're looking for, what I found from the research. Oh, wow. okay. As far as, um, they're not going to, a lot of men would just say, you know, I just would love to come home my wife to be naked and, right. and just dote all over me. And right. uh, women were uh, more along the lines, like, I'd like two or three men, I'd like this, right. I'd like right. that. Way more, <laughs> their scenarios are a little more intense. Yeah, right? so um, it's just interesting that if, if you talk as a couple and right. just have fun with that about things that you want out of the relationship. So guys are actually easier to please. Absolutely, absolutely, wow. they are. So, so my husband and I, from learning through all that, we implemented everything, and it's just like little tiny changes. So it's funny, you might think your partner's attractive or looks good at a certain moment, right. but you might not say anything. Sure. So we have a thing now where no matter where we are, what we're doing, we say it. You know, even if it's embarrassing, like, hey, right. baby, you look really good right now. You know, and that's, and that's really important in the relationship, just to throw out those compliments. You think it, say it. Right, and the thing is, when you get compliments, 
you even want to try harder to do better. Right. You'd like the encouragement. Yeah, it does. And I hear, you know, you're not stopping here. There's a lot more in the future for you. Yes, actually we have all the all the research and data for singles. So the second book will be um, What's Normal in Singles and Dating. Oh, wow. So that'll I'll be, be curious interesting. To find that out. What people are doing around the world, what the dating yeah. scene looks like, and what works, what doesn't work. There's a lot of people that have a big challenge there. I mean, the nightclub scene, the yes. bar scene. I mean, there's so much, and there's the internet. Online which is crazy. dating. Everybody's faking who they are, and it's, yeah. it's hard to dig through all that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, and the normal bar is going to be a, a full brand, so relationships singles and dating. I think the third book I want to have on health, fitness, and nutrition, what's normal, what works for people, Ooh. that sort of thing. Looking at, again, I look at the United States, but then I like to drizzle in other countries. Sure. Very interested in whatever the people are doing, where we're the same, where we're the different. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really fun. Well, where can people look you up? I mean, do you have a website? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we have the normalbar.com. Normalbar.com. Yeah, okay. that's that's the website. And um, I also have my own website, christiananorthrop.com. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm very impressed, and this is stuff people really need to know because, you know, once you get in a relationship, I mean, you just don't want to throw it away. Right. And, and this is a way to make it better, isn't it? Yes, it is. Absolutely. And it you've is. done the research for us. And more Absolutely. The largest and the most extensive study ever done in the world. Amazing. Yeah. You're fun. pretty impressed, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, I heard that uh, you're going to give us some uh, workout tips, too, next. Yes, I am. So you're going to change up. I know you got the, the hurt leg. <laughs> yes. And how did you, how did you hurt that leg? Dirt biking. Dirt biking. She's dirt biking. All right. So you're going to show us stuff that you can do with a broken leg, right? I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> Sounds good. I can't wait to check that Thanks. out. Well, now, this looks pretty intimidating for most people. <laughs> what do we call this? It's a pull-up, right? A pull-up, yes. And, and there's chin-ups, there's pull-ups. There's pull -ups. chin ups, pull -ups, there's bar muscle-ups. You could do a ton of stuff on the bar. This is what it would look like. Look at it. I just want you to know she's got extra weight here, uh, quite a bit, and, uh, you know, she's still a trooper. <laughs> so the way the way I work and the way most people work with somebody sure. trying to do a pull-up is jumping on the box. Just giving your shoulders and the back a little memo. Hey, I'm going to start using you because most people don't use your back. So literally, I would have them to this degree and just a little baby jump. Oh, okay. Just a little baby jump. And then as their muscles start to develop, because your body does get the memo, yeah. oh, you're going to start using me? Okay. I need to start reacting Better to wake that. up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you put a lower box. Okay. So then they, they can go from a bigger jump. Okay. Kipping pull-up is using your hips. Okay. So not everybody can just go up there and just do a dead hang pull up right. because that's a lot of upper body strength. Yeah. And that's so the goal. It is. It is the goal. But and we'll show them that. Yeah. We're like, let's be efficient. Let's bring in some other body parts and let's get you to do what you need to do without killing yourself. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> so for a kipping pull up, you want to use your hips more. So I use my hips to pull up. I'll see almost kicking. So, yep. I use my hips and I'm pushing away. Get the kipping pull-ups, kind of using that hips and that body weight in, and then you can start working on the dead hang. Okay, so you're hanging. So you're dead hang, and you simply pull yourself all the way up. And those are never easier. No, <laughs> no, they're not. And they're definitely not easy with extra weight on <laughs> extra there. Extra weight, yeah. Right on. Wow, looks like the big boy and the baby. <laughs> yes. Now the baby, I'm, I feel comfortable with. Maybe not so much the big boy here. It takes some time. To and get then there's there. a bigger boy. Yes, and there's even a bigger one. Wow. Yes. So how does this all start? I mean, you're gonna jump up here. That's the goal. Of it. Eventually, eventually. Okay. But most people have a very big fear of jumping up on a box, as they should, because if you don't feel comfortable, you can trip and hurt yeah. yourself. And, and then how does that we happen? We just simply tell our members to step up on it okay, and gotcha. back down again. And then they would jump up on it. And then when they graduate to this one, they would step up on it for and a while. And then the big boy, the same thing. Exactly. It's going to balance out your hamstrings, your yes. quadriceps, your glutes, the whole bit, right? And it makes your butt tighter. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sexier. Yes, it is. And I'm sure your husband appreciates yes. that. Yes. We got some kettlebells yeah, the here. Kettlebells are also, people sometimes think the kettlebells are for the arms. They immediately think, yeah. oh, I'm lifting a kettlebell. It's all about the arms. When it's really more about the core. Okay. Again, using your hamstrings and your hips and your, your core body to get that kettlebell up and moving along. Right, well. So we always start people with the smaller kettlebell just to kind of get used to even swinging it and feeling comfortable right. with it. So, so, and again, I always tell people when you grab the kettlebell, it's almost like an angry gorilla. You don't want to ever just bend over and grab it. Yeah, you want to bend it like this. <laughs> just like well, there you go. Right so I always make that noise. Yeah, well, right. That's good. We like that. We appreciate that, okay? Now, that's not part of the normal technique, is it? <laughs> you know, it's part of it my technique. Be. It could be, right? <laughs> it's a good way to pick up the kettlebell. You want to have your feet right outside your hips, 
and just using your hips to pull it up. Okay. So it's not arms, it's your arms are nice and straight and it's just hips, okay. just pulling it right up. See, it can be done. Yes. There's no yes. excuse. And yes. she's got a baby broken steps. leg. Baby, baby steps. steps, right? Yeah, baby steps. Right, and then another thing you want to show us was the, the wall and the ball. Yeah, yeah. And what's that called, though? Um, we call them wall balls. Oh, wall balls. <laughs> yeah. Hey, imagine that, you know? <laughs> we call them wall balls. Okay, well, let's go on over there and okay. check that one out. I didn't grab one. Cool. Wall balls. <laughs> well, you got me over here in the wall area, and you got a ball and a wall. Yes, I do. So that's all you need, right? <laughs> that's all you need. Well, before you get to the ball, yeah. we usually show our members air squats. Okay. The proper air squat, you have your feet right outside your hips. Okay. Your chest is up. You're going to break parallel, which means your butt's going to go past where your knees are. Okay. Chest out and driving from your heels. So all the way down, a little difficult with one leg. <laughs> oh, yeah. But basically, just your oh, knee, yeah. knees go out. And so we have them do air squats for quite some time. So yeah. another exercise we would help them to get to be able to squat is we put them against the wall. Okay. And we have them stand like this and squat down like this. Yeah. Okay, so that's another way that we help people get their flexibility. Okay. Then we introduce the wall ball. Okay. And with the ball, we start light. Right, and there's beginning. different weights of balls. Absolutely. Okay. We, we go from six all the way to 25. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so we start. What's that right there? This one I think is 12. Okay. So this one's 12 pounds. So with the wall ball, you wanna put it right up here. Okay. Again, you're in that squat position where your feet are right outside your hips. I gotta put this foot out a little bit more because of the broken leg. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, squat down, throw the ball up, hit the target, and catch wow. it as it comes down. And keeping my chest up, keeping that chest up. Yeah. So, um, and that's why going against the wall really helps you keep that chest up Absolutely. and driving from the heels. Yeah, and it does so much because it's such a core and- Yeah, oh. core. Hamstrings and butt again. I noticed some tires over there when we were a little earlier. Yes, yeah. So when you have different sizes, so let's go over there and show us how to use those Yeah, tires. that's a lot of fun. This looks pretty interesting, so let's check it out. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're back over here with the tires, and I know you should have three different sizes, and just like everything else. Baby steps. Baby steps. Okay, yes. so that looks like a, and you had a smaller tire than this, I think, a little do, baby, yeah. baby yeah. wheelbarrow tire. <laughs> yes, we have a very small one. So how does it start out with this little small tire? Well, you, you can use a small tire just to get people, again, used to getting in the position to flip a tire. And, and flipping a tire not only builds strength and core, but it's also fun. Yeah. It gets you outside. It's different. You can do it inside and outside, and it's different, exactly, and it's functional movement. So with even the baby tire, just getting some comfortable with addressing the tire mm -hmm. we tell them again feet right outside your hips chest up drive with your heels use those hamstrings and just flip the tire just get you can flip, yeah, it, flip, it, flip, you flip it. it and have fun once you feel comfortable with that squat and just flipping you can go on to a little bit bigger okay well let's see where yeah. you're at right now so. and this is a hey guys remember <laughs> I'm qualifying all this I mean hello yes yeah and she, leg. she's a badass all right <laughs> so again t hit feet right outside your hips chest up driving from your heels using those hamstrings and just flipping the tire. We also tell people that you can use your knee. If you, if you get oh, it over. Oh, right, to get it over? Yeah, you just oh pop it, God. pop it, pop it with your knee. All right. On the bigger tires, you have to really make sure you have a decent grip. So there's okay. some, some, some tires you just can't even grip, and if you can't grip it, don't, don't try to. Yeah, don't even don't go any, Don't even go there. This actually has really good positioning to grip on, so I can get my hands under there pretty easily. Again, I'm, I, I'm driving from my heels. I'm in my squat. I'm keeping my chest up and just lifting it right up. And then again, you can use your knee if you need to. Yeah, I saw that, use your knee to stabilize it. Just like that. You did good. <laughs> Why the hammer, believe it or not, is also a nice little core, yes. because if you're all loosey goosey. And hey, guess what? You know, you're talking about relationships, right? Yes. After you swing the sledgehammer a few times, you're not mad anymore, are you? No, you're not. And you okay. get rid of all that aggression. All right. Work, kids. So on the sledgehammer, we lift it up, our hand comes down, and we hit it really hard. <laughs> Just like that. That's gotta feel good. It's really fun. Yeah, you're like done. Yeah, that. it's you're so like, fun. Mix this you... in with the pull-ups and the wall balls, and every day it's different, and we have some only lifting. We have a little bit of everything. It's a lot of fun, mixing right. it up. Well, that's what it really ends up with exercise. It's not always about how you look. In fact, that's yeah. not the big deal. Yeah. The big deal is how do you function. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that helps, like you say, in a lot of areas, including yeah. the bedroom and relationships, yeah. and that's what it's all about, right? That's exactly what it's all about. Yeah, well, thanks so much. Having fun with it. 
I know. <laughs> you are. You're so fun. This is so fun. Yeah. Thanks so much, by the way. Yeah, and thank you. This was amazing. And thank you so much for being here with us. And until next time, just remember to enjoy. enjoy.